During this segment, we'll see a master calendar hearing in immigration court. This hearing is designed so that the judge can schedule the full hearing on the merits of the case. It's usually a relatively short hearing. The judge will also review the allegations and charges that appear on the client's notice to appear, which is a, fi a, a charging document that is served on the client and gives the court jurisdiction over the asylum seeker. The judge will also enter all evidence into the record. Lawyers who are appearing at a master calendar hearing need to prepare two documents. The first is the EOIR 28, which is a notice of entry of appearance as the attorney on record. And the second is an I-589 application for asylum. The lawyer should also have responses to all the allegations and charges that appear on the notice to appear. Lawyers often use the master calendar hearing as a way to learn as much as they can about the immigration judge and to familiarize their client with the courtroom setting. Today is October 27th. We're in the immigration court in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Judge Joseph L. presiding in removal proceedings for Fatima Torre, file number A12-345-678. The respondent is present and represented by counsel. Counsel for the respondents, please identify yourselves. Marisa Chancharulo. Uh, Chris Nugent, appearing pro bono for the respondent. Thank you, Beth. And for the Department of Homeland Security? Stephen Spiegelhalter, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Uh, there is a court interpreter present today in proficient in the French and English languages, and that is Ms. Uh, Sandrine Pochelon as the uh, court interpreter today. Uh, to counsel for the respondents, what language will we be going forward in uh, today? We, the can, we can proceed in English, assuming our client is not going to testify, where in that case we would need backup uh, potential interpretation in French. Okay. Well, we have the interpreter available if you do need so. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, to Ms. Torrey, can you understand me in the language that I'm speaking now? Yes. All right. And for, is your name spelled T-O-U-R-E? Is that the correct spelling of your name? Okay, first name Fatima. All right, you have certain rights in these proceedings today. The first of those rights is the right to counsel at no expense to the government, and you have pro bono counsel representing you today. You also have the right to present evidence, show me any documents, or tell me anything you wish about your case. The Department of Homeland Security today is represented by Mr. Spiegelhalter. If he gives me any papers, any documents related to you, I will give them to you and to your attorney so that you can review them. Finally, at the end of your case, I'm going to make a decision, and if you do not agree with that decision, you'll have the right to appeal that to a higher court called the Board of Immigration Appeals. Do you understand what I've just told you? Yes. All right. Thank you. And first of all, to Mr. Nugent, Ms. Chanterio, uh, has your client been served with a copy of the notice to appear? It is dated November 30th. Yes, Your Honor. I'm going to mark that into the record as exhibit number one. Are you ready to go forward with pleadings on that document today? Uh, yes, Your Honor. All right. I'm going to go through these allegations individually. First of all, your client is alleged to be an arriving alien. Allegation number one, you are not a citizen or national of the United States. How do you plead? Uh, we admit this allegation. Allegation two, you are a native of Guinea and a citizen of Guinea. Uh, we admit this allegation as well. Allegation three, you were apprehended by the Department of Homeland Security at JFK Airport in New York. We admit this allegation. And allegation four, you were not then in possession of a document evidencing lawful inspection and authorization of lawful entry into the United States. Uh, we admit this allegation. All right. And allegation number five, at the time of your entry into the United States, you were presented a passport and visa with the intention of gaining admission through a willful misrepresentation of a material fact. How do you plead to that? We respectfully deny this allegation. All right. I'll show that allegations one through four are admitted. Allegation five is denied. There are two separate legal charges. The first charge is under Section 212A6AI of the Immigration and Nationality Act in that the respondent is an alien present in the United States without having been admitted or paroled or who arrived in the United States at any time or place other than as designated by the Attorney General. How do you plead to that? Uh, we concede this charge. All right. 
and the second charge under Section 212A6CI of the Immigration and Nationality Act is that the respondent is an individual who by fraud or willful misrepresentation of a material fact has sought to enter or has sought to procure or has procured a visa, documentation, admission, or other benefit in, under this chapter as inadmissible. How do you plead to that? Uh, we deny this charge. All right. Uh, I will well, I'm sorry. Yeah, our, our, uh, our contention is that our client lacked, is a child who lacked the requisite mens rea and knowledge and skills to commit immigration fraud. When she fled Guinea, her tra travel documents were arranged through a family friend, and she was unaware um, that there were any problems with her travel documents until she arrived in the United States at, at John F. Kennedy Airport. And do you know how old she was at that time that she left Guinea? Uh, she was 16 at that All time. All right. Uh, Mr. Spiegelhalter, uh, counsel has denied the factual allegation and the charge, the fraud charge, under 212A6CI. Are you ready to go forward today to prove up that charge? No, Your Honor. Given those uh, factual representations, we'd reserve that for the individual hearing so okay. that we could deal with it. Then we'll deal with that at that issue, and that also would go to the discretionary issue if she did qualify for any type of relief. So I'll hold off on that issue. I do find that the respondent is removable based on the admissions by counsel to allegations one through four. I also find that she's removable under Section 212A6AI, the legal charge, as an individual who is present without having been admitted or paroled into the United States. Do you wish to designate a country for removal should that become necessary? No, uh, no Your Honor. All right. That, that will be declined. And what relief, if any, will your client be seeking? Uh, our client will be seeking, uh, and we have here ready to file, an application for asylum, withholding of removal, and protection, again, uh, protection under the United Nations Convention Against Torture. Okay. Thank you. Well, then, I will take that at the same time. Also, I will need your E-28, uh, and I will take that at this point. Do you have a copy for the government? Yes, Your Honor. All right. All right. Thank you. Let me mark a few documents here. I'm going to mark the, as stated previously, the notice to appear as exhibit number one. I will mark the application for asylum and withholding of removal as exhibit number two. And at this point, I have no other documents for admission into the record. I'll send this to the State Department for an advisory opinion from the State Department. In addition, I will advise you to make certain that your client does have her fingerprint checks completed. Uh, by the time that we reset this case. Ms. Torrey, your attorneys have filed an application for asylum on your behalf. Before having you sign it and swear to it, there are certain advisals I wish to give you. If I find that any material part of your application for asylum is frivolous, and by frivolous that means deliberately fabricated, I will deny your application for asylum and find you ineligible for asylum or any other type of relief. Do you understand that? Okay. Are you ready to swear to your application at this point, then? Yes. And you are familiar with the contents of your application? Yes. All right. Please stand and raise your right hand. Do you swear that the information contained in your application for asylum is true and correct to the best of your knowledge? Yes. All right. Counsel, if you can come forward and get the application and have your client sign the application, and I'll show you where she should sign that. Counsel. How long do you foresee your application, your hearing on your application going at the merit stage? Uh, we would anticipate at least three hours, three Your hours. Honor. Okay. And that is for your side of the case? Yes. And, All right. And we will be having three to four witnesses. Uh, we could present you with a witness list in advance of the hearing. All right. Thank you. And for the merits hearing, again, you will wish a French interpreter for the merits hearing? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And uh, to service counsel, uh, Mr. Spiegelhalter, do you foresee the service presenting any witnesses? No, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. All right. Then I'm going to reset this case. Um, I'll set it for 45 days down the line. I'll schedule it for December the 15th at 9 o'clock in the morning. I'll expect all documentation and witness, witness lists submitted to the court 10 business days prior to that. In addition, as I said it earlier, please make certain that your client is fingerprinted and that the service can make certain that those checks are completed and submitted to the court ahead of time. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Okay. To you, Ms. Torrey, I have to give you certain other advisals. 
You have scheduled your case for December the 15th at 9 o'clock a.m. Make sure you are present back here on that date at that time. If you fail to present yourself to the court at that time, I will have to issue an order for your removal. And if that happens, you'd be ineligible for asylum or other relief in the future, including adjustment of status, cancellation of removal, and voluntary departure for a period of at least 10 years. Do you understand that? Yes. Sir. Okay. All right. Counsel, before we go off the record, is there anything else from either side? No, Your, Your Honor. Honor. All right. I will give both sides a written notice of the hearing, and we'll be meet back here on December 15th at 9 o'clock a.m.